Welcome to the Voice of Salvation programming, whose main source is to be an inspiration to you through the message of hope and peace. And this is only achieved when you remain in tune. Stay with us and you will be blessed. The foundation of the family is rooted in the teachings of Scripture. It is through our families that we experience love, support, and a sense of belonging as we strive to find balance between ministry in the church and the well-being of our families. In today's episode of The Voice of Salvation, we will discuss the essential balance between ministry in the church and the importance of family. Essential Balance, Ministry in Church, and the Importance of the Family. Welcome to today's podcast episode of The Voice of Salvation, where we will explore the profound significance of maintaining a healthy balance between ministry in the church and the well-being of our families. As individuals committed to serving God and His people, it's very crucial to recognize the importance of nurturing our families while engaging in ministry. In today's program, we will delve into the reasons why finding balance between these two aspects of life is essential, supported by the sacred scriptures found in the Bible that guide us in our journey. The foundation of the family. In the Bible, we find numerous passages emphasizing the significance of the family unit. In the book of Ephesians chapter 5, verse 25, the Bible instructs husbands to love your wives, just as Christ loved the church and gave himself up for her. Now, these verses remind us that our primary responsibility is to love and care for our spouses and families, mirroring the sacrificial love of Christ for his church. Now, our families serve as the foundation of our lives, providing us with love, support, and a sense of belonging. In the book of Proverbs, chapter 22, verse 6, The Bible says, train up a child in the way he should go. Even when he is old, he will not depart from it. Now, this verse emphasizes to us the importance of intentional parenting within the family unit. 
You see, as parents, it is our job to raise our children in the ways of the Lord, teaching them His commandments and instilling in them a love for God. You see, the family serves as a nurturing environment where faith is passed down from one generation to the next, this ensuring the continuation of God's work in the world. The value of family is highlighted in the book of Psalms, chapter 127, verse 3, which states, Behold, children are a heritage from the Lord, the fruit of the womb a reward. Now, this verse reminds us that our children are a precious gift from God. They're entrusted to our care. And it is our responsibility to raise them in a loving and nurturing environment. By doing what? By prioritizing our families. We not only honor God's design for the family, but also create a strong foundation for future generations to continue the work in the ministry of the church. Jesus himself emphasized the importance of family. In the book of Mark, chapter 3, verses 33 through 35, when told that his mother and brothers were outside, Jesus responded, Who are my mother and my brothers? Here are my mother and my brothers. For whoever does the will of God, he is my brother and sister and mother. Jesus redefined the concept of family to include all those who follow and do the will of God. Now, while our biological families hold a a special place in our hearts, our spiritual family within the church is equally significant. Balancing ministry and family then involves nurturing both our biological and spiritual families, recognizing that they are interconnected and vital in our overall well-being. You see, the foundation of family is rooted in the teachings of Scripture. It is through our families that we experience love, support, and a sense of belonging. As we strive to find balance between ministry in the church and the well-being of our families, we must remember the biblical guidance provided to us. By prioritizing our families, we then reflect the sacrificial love of Christ and honor the gift of family that God has bestowed upon us. Now, let us continue in God's wisdom and grace as we navigate this journey of ministry and family. How do we do this? We do this by leading by example. You see, the scriptures encourage us to be good leaders, not only good leaders, but to lead by example within our families and the church. In 1 Timothy chapter 3, verse 4 and 5, it states he must manage his own family well, and see that his children obey him, and he must do so in a manner worthy of full respect. So if anyone does not know how to manage his own family, how can he take care of the church of God? So these verses, they highlight to us the importance of prioritizing our family and leading them with integrity. By demonstrating a healthy balance between ministry and family, we then inspire others to do the same as leaders. In Titus chapter 2, verses 7 through 8, the Apostle Paul instructs us. And what does he say? Show yourself in all respects to be a model of good works. And in your teaching, show integrity, dignity, and sound speech that cannot be condemned. So that an opponent may be put to shame, having nothing evil to say about us. As leaders, In both our families and the church, we are called to be examples of Christ-like behavior, not only in our ministry, but also in our personal lives. You see, our families are watching us closely. They're observing how we navigate the challenges of life and ministry. When we prioritize our families and lead them with integrity, we then demonstrate the transformative power of our faith in action. Our actions speak louder than words. And by modeling a healthy balance between ministry and family, we then inspire others to follow suit. In Matthew 5, 16, Jesus tells his disciples, Let your light shine before others, so that they may see your good works and give glory to your Father who is in heaven. By leading our families with love, humility, and a servant's heart, then we not only fulfill our responsibility as parents and spouses, but we also bring glory to God. Our families become a shining testimony of God's grace and love, drawing others closer to Him. 
Leading by example also extends our role within the church. In 1 Peter 5 and 3, Peter exhorts the elders and he says to them, Not domineering over those in your charge, but being examples to the flock. So as leaders in the church, we must lead with humility and servant heart, guiding and supporting those under our care. By balancing our commitments to ministry and family, we then demonstrate the importance of prioritizing both and inspire others to do the same. And this is why Scripture calls us to be leaders by example within our families and the church, by managing our families well by leading them with integrity, by demonstrating a healthy balance between ministry and family. We then become powerful witnesses of God's love and grace. We have to remember that our actions hold the power to inspire, to encourage, and to guide others on their journey of balancing ministry and family. May we continually seek God's wisdom and strength as we strive to lead by example both within our homes and and the church. For what? For the glory of God and His kingdom. But as we do this, we're going to begin to notice that we're nurturing emotionally healthy families. We're nurturing those around us in a healthy way. You see, ministry can be demanding and emotionally taxing at times, yes. And it is in these moments that the love and support of our families become invaluable. Proverbs 17, 17 reminds us, A friend loves at all times, and a brother is born for a time of adversity. So our families serve as a as our closest allies, providing emotional support, encouragement, and guidance in times of need. And by investing time and effort into our family relationships, we then create a safe space where we can rejuvenate and find peace and seek guidance. In Galatians chapter 6, verse 2, the Apostle Paul instructs, and he says the following, Bear one another's burdens, and so fulfill the law of Christ. Our families play a crucial role in helping us navigate the emotional challenges that come with ministry. They provide a safe and loving space where we can share our burdens, seek comfort, and find peace. By nurturing them that family relationship, we then cultivate an environment of emotional support that strengthens us in times of adversity. In addition to seeking support from our families, Scripture encourages us to turn to God for emotional healing and strength. In Psalm 62, verse 8, the psalmist declares, Trust in Him at all times, O people, and pour out your heart before Him. God is a refuge for us. So when ministry becomes overwhelming, we find peace in God's presence. Pouring out our hearts to Him in prayer, He is our ultimate source of comfort, understanding, and renewal. By prioritizing our family's emotional well-being, we then demonstrate the importance of self-care. Jesus himself recognized the need for rest. In Mark 6.31, he said to his disciples, Come with me by yourselves to a quiet place and get some rest. Just as Jesus prioritized moments of rest and solitude, we must also take intentional steps to care for our emotional health. This may include setting aside quality time to connect with our family, engaging in activities that bring us joy, seeking sometimes even professional counseling when needed, and fostering open communication within our family unit. By nurturing our emotional health and fostering strong family bonds, we then create a solid foundation from which we can effectively serve in ministry. Our families become a source of strength, encouragement, and guidance, allowing us then to navigate the emotional demands of our calling with resilience and grace. Ministry can be emotionally taxing, it's true. Making the love and the support of our families invaluable. By investing then in our family relationships, 
We not only create a space that is safe where we can find peace and guidance, but the scripture once more reminds us of the importance of bearing one another's burdens and seeking God's comfort in times of need. As we prioritize then our family's emotional well-being, we demonstrate the significance of self-care and create then a foundation, as stated earlier, of strength from which we can serve God and His people. May we continually seek emotional healing and strength from God, while at the same time leaning on the love and support of our families as we navigate what is known today as the challenges of ministry. All of this will then help us to prioritize our time and boundaries. Filing balance, which requires intentional time management, and setting healthy boundaries. In the book of Mark 6.31, Jesus told his disciples, as we stated earlier, come with me by yourselves to a quiet place and get some rest. Even Jesus recognized the need for rest. So what do we have to do? We must also prioritize those times of rest, setting boundaries, managing our time effectively. We ensure then that our families receive the attention and care they deserve. In Exodus chapter 20, verse 8, one of the Ten Commandments states, Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Now, the Sabbath serves as a reminder to prioritize rest and dedicate time with our families. It is a day set apart for worship, rejuvenation, and fellowship. Now, we establish this type of rhythm of rest and create opportunities for meaningful connections with our family, with our spouse, and with our children. You see, the scripture furthermore encourages us to be wise stewards of our time. In Psalms chapter 90, verse 12, the psalmist says, So teach us to number our days that we may get a heart of wisdom. What does that mean? It means that we're recognizing the limited nature of time. We are called to prioritize our commitments and make intentional choices that align with our values. This includes setting aside dedicated family time such as regular meals together, family outings, and engaging in activities that promote bonding and communication, setting healthy boundaries. It's also essential in maintaining a healthy balance between ministry and family. It involves learning to say no to excessive demands and recognizing our limitations. In Mark chapter 1, verse 35 through 37, we see Jesus setting boundaries by withdrawing to a place of quiet and peace, a place to pray, even when the crowds sought him. By establishing boundaries, we protect our time, our energy, and emotional well-being, allowing us to be fully present for our families. Effective time management techniques can help us to optimize our schedules and ensure that our families receive the attention they deserve. This may include prioritizing tasks, delegating responsibilities, and practicing time-blocking techniques. By being intentional and organized, we then create dedicated time for both ministry and family, avoiding unnecessary stress and conflicts. Finding balance between ministry and family then requires prioritizing time and setting healthy boundaries. Just as Jesus himself modeled the importance of rest and solitude, we must intentionally carve out quality time for our families. By observing the Sabbath, practicing wise management in the sense of what we were talking about, and setting healthy boundaries, we create space for rest and meaningful connections with our spouse and children. All of this will then bring us to unity and purpose. Balancing ministry and family. It also requires fostering unity and collaboration. You see, in Psalms 133, verse 1, it states how good and pleasant it is when God's people live together in unity. When our families are united in purpose, supporting and understanding our call to ministry, it becomes easier to navigate the demands of both worlds. Regular communication, 
Shared goals and involving our families in aspects of our ministry can strengthen the bond between ministry and family. In 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 12 through 14, the Apostle Paul compares the body of Christ to a human body, emphasizing the importance of unity and collaboration. He writes, For just as the body is one, as many members, and all the members of the body, though many are one body, so it is with Christ. For in one spirit we are all baptized into one body. Jews or Greeks, slaves or free, all were made to drink of one spirit. For the body does not consist of one member, but many. So similarly, our families and ministries are interconnected parts of our lives. And when we foster unity and collaboration within our families, recognizing the unique roles and contributions of each member, we cultivate a strong support system that enables us to navigate the challenges of ministry together. Open and regular communication with our families is crucial for unity. By involving our loved ones in our ministry journey and sharing our joys and struggles and vision with them, we create a sense of shared purpose. And this can be achieved through family meetings, setting aside dedicated time to discuss ministry-related manners and seeking their input and perspectives. You see, when our families feel included and valued, they become more supportive and understanding of the demands of our ministry. Involving our families in aspects of ministry can deepen their connection and sense of ownership. This may involve inviting them to participate in service projects, attend church events together, or even allowing them to contribute their unique talents and skills to the ministry. By including our families in our ministry endeavors, we not only strengthen our relationships, but we also allow them to witness firsthand the impact of our work, fostering a shared sense of purpose and pride. It's important to remember that unity in purpose does not mean neglecting the individual needs and aspirations of our family members. Rather, it involves finding a harmony, a balance between our call to ministry and the well-being and growth of each family member. By actively seeking to understand and support the dreams and aspirations of our loved ones, we then create an environment of mutual respect, love, and support. As we conclude this episode for today, let us remember that finding balance between ministry and the church and the well-being of our families is a sacred responsibility. By prioritizing our families, leading by example, nurturing emotional health, setting boundaries, and fostering unity and purpose, we then create an environment where both our families and the church thrive. Let us seek guidance from the scriptures, drawing wisdom from its teachings as we journey on this path of serving God and His people. May we find the essential balance that enables us to be faithful stewards of both our family and ministry callings. And in this pursuit of balance, it's crucial to remember that we are not alone. You see, God's grace and strength are available to us in every step of the way. He understands the challenges we face and is ready to provide wisdom, guidance, and comfort. By seeking His presence through prayer, studying His Word, and relying on the Holy Spirit, we can then navigate the complexities of ministry and family life with confidence. It's also important to surround ourselves with a community of support. Connecting with fellow ministers and families who understand the unique dynamics of balancing ministry and family and can provide encouragement, accountability, and practical advice. Sharing experiences, challenges, and victories with others who walk in similar paths can bring comfort and reassurance. And lastly, let us remember that finding balance is an ongoing journey and it may require adjustments along the way. As seasons change and circumstances evolve, we must remain flexible and attuned to the needs of our families and ministries. Regular evaluation, reflection, and communication with our spouse, our children, 
church leadership, can help us to make necessary adjustments and adaptations to ensure that both our families and ministries thrive. And as we pursue this balance between ministry and family, it becomes an act of love and devotion to God. As we honor our family relationships and faithfully serve in ministry, we reflect the love and grace of our Heavenly Father to the world around us. And may our lives be a testimony of God's faithfulness. And may we continually seek His guidance as we strive to fulfill our calling in both ministry and family. God bless you.